Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today we are going to be taking a look at none other than the City Hunter Predator from Predator 2. I know, not everyone's favourite Pred movie but it definitely is one of mine. Now, if you are interested in seeing Hot Toys unboxing and review videos, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button for more information on Justin's Collection Plus, the channel membership. As for the box art, it is simple, yet very effective. Up front, an image of City Hunter Predator with his biomask. Up top, City Hunter Predator done in a metallic red, the same thing can be said for the name on the side, plus all of the warnings and legal info. Now, like I just said, I happen to really enjoy the movie. It's different to the first one, it's a little bit goofy, but the Predator is an absolute weapon. So when I decided, yeah, now's the time Justin, go ahead and pick up some Preds, you can bet the City Hunter was right up there at the top of my list. Now the only other Predator that I currently own is the Jungle Hunter, aka the Classic Pred. We will be doing comparisons, don't you worry. But I have been really darn excited to get this guy in hand. First in-hand impressions are that he is an absolute beast. What we are going to do now though is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first, because this guy came out in 2013, he's kind of a retro figure. He does come with the classic oval style display base. Up top, Predator 2 in that iconic font, City Hunter Predator, and then we have a regular crotch grabber. He does come with one of his trophies and it looks absolutely disgusting, but that's perfect seeing as though it's a human skull and spinal cord. It's suitably glossy, there's multiple layers of paint here, it actually looks like it's wet and slimy. Now unfortunately I haven't quite found a way to have this stored on his back like it was in the movie. But Dean Knight, in his review, used a very clever trick of a cable tie and locked it on his back, which is something that I might try for my own figure. Following on with some more trophies, he does come with a couple of bones pre-attached to his satchel, and I'm pleased to report that this is one fixed solid piece. Even the straps aren't made of pleather. They're rubbery plastic, there's some texture on the surface, and they're quite well painted with washers in the crevices both for the bones and also for the satchel. When it comes to weaponry, we do get his throwing disc. It's fully sculpted and detailed on both sides. It can be stored on his armor and split apart to be activated. It's painted in this metallic copper color. You've got some washers on the crevices and even some green paint applications that are kind of meant to replicate oxidization or even a patina. You do get two breathing masks and you may be thinking, why? Why would you need two of them? And that's because this one right here has the pegs so it can slot into his head sculpt, whereas the other simply doesn't. This is just meant to be held or placed on his display base. It's nicely sculpted, you've got these rubbery hoses around the front and another one down below, which will come into play a little bit later. And there are washers in all the crevices, plus that same metallic copper finish, just like his throwing disc. One of my absolute favorite accessories here is the chopped off arm. It looks awesome. The skin is nice and glossy. You've got the vibrant green paint applications for the blood. And oh yes, we will be trying this out on the figure a little bit later. You also get a couple of different versions of his mandibles, fully closed and fully open. I like the way they're sculpted, the teeth are suitably sharp, and they're painted beautifully, meaning they look absolutely disgusting. The inside of the mouth is fleshy and glossy looking, and the outside has a decent level of skin texture. Plus, I like the speckling and the print on the surface. Circling back to weaponry, we also get his combi stick, and this thing is really cool. There's a decent level of texture, it looks nice and battle damaged with wires poking through and chunks that have been torn away. It looks like this thing has seen a lot of action. 
And if you've seen the movie, you know it definitely has. Plus, the ends are telescopic on both sides, so you can fully extend it, making this piece absolutely huge. Now, the spikes are really spiky, so please, do be careful not to prick yourself. One of the neatest accessories is kind of more a part of his outfit. It's his first aid kit. Now, this slides onto his back, which you will see later but it can be fully opened up and the tools for the first aid kit are presented on the inside. Now you can't actually remove the tools themselves, but they are all fully sculpted individual pieces and they're painted in this shiny metallic silver. This is a really nice touch and something that at the end of the day wasn't super necessary, but predators are known to need their first aid kits, so I'm really glad it was included. Lastly, we do get the full array of hands. You've got some skin texture, some long black nails, and even some silver studs at the base of his fingers. He also has this little spike on the side. Was I the only one that didn't know the predator had these additional little spikes, but they're on every single hand, so yes, they're definitely supposed to be there. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. Even if you don't necessarily love the second Predator movie like I do, I'm pretty sure we can all agree this guy has the P word. Presence. He's big, he's imposing, the bio mask looks incredible. He's got the dreads, he's got the real netting, and he looks almost entirely seamless. Now I am curious to see how this guy compares to the Jungle Hunter, because right now I reckon that guy is still my favourite. The colour here though is super different to the Jungle Hunter, it's this more sort of burnt orange with some black speckling and the yellow highlights, the copper colour for the armour with the oxidisation, it all looks really good. Here we have him, up close and personal, and I did want to start off with the bio mask on first. Don't worry, we will be removing it and getting a much better look at his head sculpt in just a second. I really like the way it's sculpted and I love the way it's painted. It kind of looks like some really old oxidized metal. It's this nice deep rich brown colour, you have some green patina effects on the surface which are subtle but they're definitely there. Now around the back he does of course have a full head of dreads and they are all this really nice rubbery material. All of the individual links have been painted and luckily, even though this is an older figure, they haven't faded over time. You also can connect up this little cable to the back portion where there is a light up feature. Now unfortunately, I've tried a bunch of batteries, I simply can't get the light up to work. Hopefully, if you have a copy of City Hunt Pred, your light up works a lot better than mine does. With the bio mask removed, we now have a much better look at his head sculpt and oh yes, that is definitely the City Hunter Predator. The sculpting is crisp, it's nice and wet and glossy looking and the paint applications are on point. Even though as I've already said this is an older figure, Hot Toys did a really good job. Except for one thing, which is his eye colour. Now Dean Knight did a review on this guy and he brought out the Stan Winston book and showed the comparison back to the actual screen used mask. And his eyes aren't supposed to be green, they're supposed to be this nice deep rich yellowy orange. Now I don't exactly know why Hot Toys didn't correct this, but as you can see they are definitely green. They're a nice piercing colour, but at the same time they just aren't super accurate. One of the coolest things about Hot Toys Predator figures, and it kind of always has been, is that you can switch out the mandibles for the full on screaming look. And I am partial to the bio mask, but I'm really starting to like the way this looks. Now you can see a little bit of a seam down the side, but from the front it's not super obvious. It's definitely still there though, especially on the inside around the central mouth section. I also like the way these have been painted, super wet and glossy as you'd expect, just like the rest of his head sculpt. I do apologise for the continuous snap transitions, I know, it can be a lot, but it's kind of the best way to show you the various options without having to futz with the head sculpt on camera. Now you also get this mask which nicely slides in and locks in position, 
and you have this rubbery hose that snakes around and connects up rather securely to his back there. Now I don't know if this is something I would ever use in the display, I do like it, it is movie accurate, it's well sculpted and painted, but for me either the open mandible screaming head sculpt or the mask might just be my preferred option. Do let me know which one you prefer though down below. Of course, he wouldn't be complete without his plasma caster. I like the way it's sculpted, I love the way it's painted, it's suitably metallic and dirty and grimy, and it's fully articulated. It can swivel out, up and down, and the end piece is on a ball joint, so you can pretty much get it moving in any direction even behind him. Now unfortunately, because this guy is an older figure, the joint is a little bit loose. Now I'm not sure if I can do something to tighten it up, but I'm pretty sure it's this piece around the back here that's the culprit. You also have his mid pack, which you can slide on and off. It literally just hooks on with that clip right there. Now his dreads can get in the way when you're trying to slide this on, but when you have it on there, it locks in position nice and securely. You all know I am partial to an asymmetrical design, which is exactly what we have here. Meaning one side of the predator does look completely different to the other. On this side, you've got the sloped down shoulder pad with the pleather strap, whereas on this side, it comes up to a point, kind of like the feathers of an eagle's wing. We also have this piece that dangles down underneath, which is free floating, but this being so large is definitely going to impact articulation. I do, however, really like the way it's sculpted and painted. There is a ton of texture on the surface, there's pitting, there's scratching. Plus, it's nice and shiny and metallic with the wash over the top to make it look decently weathered. You also have netting on one arm, whereas the other is left completely blank, but you can see the skin is nice and glossy. Unfortunately though, you do get a much better look at the joint on this side, which is completely unpainted. Whereas on the other, because of the netting, it's simply not as visible. You also have the flip open self destruct sequence, which, yes, of course, can be fully closed, and the same thing can be said for the projectile launcher. Now, this isn't the easiest thing in the world to open up. The best way I've found to do it is to open that door first, then pop your fingernail underneath from the side and move it up. Or you could switch it out entirely for the battle damaged arm, which to my surprise went on really easily. I thought I was going to have to sit here fighting with it, but you really don't have to, it simply slides in and locks in position. You still retain some articulation, so if you wanted to you could bend it and try to hide that joint just a little bit more. You have a ton of texture to the stump plus a really nice vibrant green for the Predator's blood. On the other side, you do have his Predator wrist blades, and yes, they are made of real metal. The gauntlet itself is quite well sculpted, although I feel like I've said that about all of the armor, and it's painted in the exact same way as the armor on his upper torso. Now, the wrist blades themselves can extend out and articulate up and down, but because they are real metal, please be very, very careful when you are moving them up and down or in and out, because I've already spiked myself more than a few times with these wrist blades. The skirt piece is also an asymmetrical design. You've got a pouch on one side that's fully sculpted, not pleather, no pouch on the other, this armor plate that hangs down, you've got this little piece connected with strings up the top, so yes, it will move out of the way for articulation. And then lastly, the fully articulated and removable throwing disc. Now, the connection isn't the most secure, so when you have it in there, make sure you give it a real strong push so it doesn't fall out when you start posing your predator. Now, unlike the arms, the legs are pretty much entirely seamless. Yes, around the back you can see the joints, but let's be honest, for the most part, you're going to be looking at the predator front on. I do love the skin texture, it's very reptilian, it's nice and glossy, and the gradient work looks on point. You also have the real fabric netting and the elastic and fully movable knee pads, plus an asymmetrical design for the shin armor. You've got the net launcher on one side, which nice and securely locks in position, and yes, he can hold it. You will see that a little bit later. As for the feet, 
they are really nasty. He's got a bunch of big claws around the front, plus a couple more on the sides. And the bottom is fully sculpted, textured, and painted. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the City Hunter on the left and the classic Predator on the right. As you can see, City Hunter is the taller of the two. Now, I don't know if that's super accurate, I've seen all of the films, but we never really got to see these guys side by side. So if you know if this is accurate, please let me know down in the comments below. I do like that there's a bit of variety in height, in colour, and in the way they've done the armour. Not to mention all of the scene-specific accessories that come with the City Hunter. Now, for me, I can't get over the classic. I love the design, it's just my all-time favourite. But I know everyone has their favourite Predator design, mine just happens to be Predator 1. Going over articulation, do bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. Starting off with the head sculpt, it's on a double ball peg, looking forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there, they will go forward and back, plus a teeny amount of butterfly up there at the shoulder. You do have a single ratcheted bend at the elbow that also happens to incorporate a swivel, plus a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. You have a swivel for the waist, no crunch forward and back, and unfortunately, no pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to there, they will go out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, single bend at the knee that does get you to 90, and then a hinge and swivel down here for the ankle. Wrapping up on the Hot Toys City Hunter Predator based off his appearance in Predator 2. Now, before this video started, I only had one other Predator, and that's the classic, the OG. I love that figure, and it's still my all-time favourite. But this comes in a very close second. Now, you may be sitting there thinking, Justin, of course it comes in second, you only have two Predator figures. Yes, currently. But don't worry, that will be changing very soon. I have a lot more Preds on the way, and as we review them, I will update my rankings accordingly. I like the proportions here. He's big, but he's not overly bulky. He still needs to be light enough to traverse the rooftops, which is exactly what we see in the second movie. I like the armor. It's really well painted. I know I've said that a bunch, but it's kind of... The best way to describe what we're looking at here. There's a patina, it's suitably metallic, there are washes in the crevices. Even though this guy is an older figure, he's still really good, even by today's standards. Now, if Hot Toys tackled a 3.0 version, would he be even better? Yeah, I reckon he would be. But for now, I'm still one happy Predator collector. He also comes with a ton of very scene-specific accessories, and some moving parts and pieces on his armor, such as the moving die-cast blades. As I said, I will be picking up more Preds. My current plan is to pick up the main Predator from each movie, including AVP and AVP Requiem. So that should give you a rough idea of what I have coming into the collection in the near future. If you are heading down to the description, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button for more info on Justin's Collection Plus, if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.